This is NASA's Perseverance rover, which landed on the surface of Mars on February 18, 2021. Perseverance is the most sophisticated rover NASA has ever sent to the Red Planet to date. The name Perseverance embodies NASA's passion and the human spirit to take on and overcome challenges. Its primary mission is to carefully collect selected and documented rock and sediment samples for future return to Earth. Search for signs of ancient microbial life, characterize the planet's geology and climate, and pave the way for human exploration beyond our moon. Perseverance's landing site was near the Jezero Crater, which was a 28-mile or 45-kilometer wide basin located in the Martian Northern Hemisphere. Strong evidence suggests that around 3.5 billion years ago, an ancient river flowed into a body of water about the size of Lake Tahoe, depositing sediments into a delta. The Perseverance science team believes this ancient river delta and lake deposits could have collected and preserved organic molecules and other potential signs of microbial life. What makes this challenging is the terrain that Perseverance landed on. Thanks to technologies that enable Perseverance to target its landing site more accurately and avoid landing on hazards autonomously, the rover safely touched down on the ancient river delta which contains steep cliffs, sand dunes, and boulder fields. What's interesting is that much of Perseverance's rover mission design is mostly directly inherited from the Curiosity rover mission, which landed on Mars in 2012. However, compared to its predecessor, Perseverance carries upgraded improved entry, descent, and landing technology. But before we talk more about this new technology, let's focus our attention on the spacecraft's key components that make up the Perseverance mission. The spacecraft consists of the crew stage, descent stage, back shell, and heat shield, plus the rover. These major parts of the Mars 2020 mission spacecraft design were based on the successful Mars Science Laboratory mission, which delivered the Curiosity rover to Mars in August 2012. The crew stage supports the whole vehicle during the seventh month journey to Mars, keeping it powered up, in communication, and on target. It features a large solar array to provide power to the rover during a seventh month trip. Radio antennas keep the vehicle in contact with Earth, and fuel tanks and small thrusters on the cruise stage allow it to adjust the vehicle's course as needed during the cruise phase. Together, the back shell and heat shield form the aero shell, which protects the rover during its turbulent descent to Mars. The back shell also houses additional thrusters that fire during the guided entry portion of entry, descent, and landing. Inside the top of the back shell is the canister from which the parachute is released during descent. The descent stage is also known as the rover's free-flying jetpack, which separates from the back shell and uses eight engines to slow the final descent. It also contains the landing radar system, which is used to make last-minute decisions about touchdown. Just before touchdown, the descent stage lowers the rover on cables before gently placing it on the Martian surface. Once the rover is on the ground, the descent stage flies off to make its own uncontrolled landing on the surface, a safe distance away from the rover. The rover is a six-wheel vehicle loaded with cameras and scientific instruments. It's designed to explore the Martian surface, make discoveries, and collect samples. The heat shield helps slow the vehicle down during its final approach, while protecting the rover inside from the intense heat experienced during entry into the Martian atmosphere. The heat shield could be exposed to temperatures as hot as 2,370 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1,300 degrees Celsius as it descends through the Martian atmosphere. Entry, descent, and landing, often referred to as EDL, is the shortest and most intense phase of the Perseverance mission. It all begins when the spacecraft ferrying the Perseverance rover reaches the top of the Martian atmosphere. At this point, it's traveling nearly 12,500 miles per hour or 20,000 kilometers per hour. Seven minutes later, it ends with Perseverance stationary on the Martian surface. To safely go from those speeds down to zero in that short amount of time while hitting a narrow target on the surface requires a fast reduction in speed in the most careful, creative, and challenging way. A multitude of things has to go just right in order for the EDL phase to correctly execute. 
To add to this, the spacecraft and Perseverance handled everything autonomously. During the landing, it takes more than 11 minutes to get a radio signal back from Mars. So by the time the mission team hears that the spacecraft has entered the atmosphere, in reality, the rover is already on the ground. Let's go through each step of the EDL process in further detail to appreciate this marvel of engineering. 10 minutes before entering the Martian atmosphere, the spacecraft releases its cruise stage, which houses components such as solar panels, radios, and fuel tanks used during its flight to Mars. Once this happens, only the protective aeroshell with rover and descent stage inside makes the trip to the surface. The protective aeroshell is made up of a heat shield and back shell. This aeroshell is very similar to the one used by the Mars Science Laboratory mission and its Curiosity rover, but with sensory upgrades that collects temperature and pressure data from both the heat shield and back shell. By measuring these data points that the vehicle experiences, and by tracking the performance of the heat shield, the mission team can update their understanding of the Martian atmosphere. Data collected later from the rover's weather station will give them even more insights. Together, this information will help them design future entry, descent, and landing systems, reducing risks to both robotic and future human mission to Mars. Now, right before entering the atmosphere, small thrusters on the back shell are fired to reorient itself and make sure the heat shield is facing forward. As the spacecraft breaks into the Martian atmosphere, the drag produced drastically slows it down, but these forces also produce significant heat. At about 80 seconds after entry into the atmosphere, peak heating occurs. The temperature at the external surface of the heat shield reaches about 2,370 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1,300 degrees Celsius. Despite the heat, the rover gets up to only about room temperature in the safety of the aeroshell. As the descent begins through the atmosphere, the spacecraft encounters pockets of air that can nudge it off course. This is a result of the variable density of the air pockets found in the Martian atmosphere. To remedy this issue, the spacecraft fires off small thrusters located on the back shell that adjust its angle and direction of lift. This guided entry technique helps the spacecraft stay on path to its downrange target. Right around this point in the EDL process, the heat shield slows the spacecraft to under 1,000 miles per hour or 1,600 kilometers per hour. Now it's finally safe to deploy the supersonic parachute. In order for this critical event to unfold, Perseverance uses its range trigger technology to calculate its distance to the landing target and thereafter deploy a parachute to hit its target. The parachute, which is about 70 and a half feet or 21 and a half meters in diameter, deploys about 240 seconds after entry at an altitude of about seven miles or 11 kilometers at a velocity of about 940 miles per hour or 1,512 kilometers per hour. Now let's talk about range trigger, a new precision landing technique for choosing the right moment to release the spacecraft's parachute. Range Trigger is the name of the method that Mars 2020 uses to time the parachute's deployment. In the past, earlier missions deploy their parachutes as early as possible, after the spacecraft reached its desired velocity. However, instead of deploying as early as possible, the mission's range trigger deploys the parachute based on the spacecraft's position relative to the desired landing target. That means that the parachute could be deployed early or later, depending on how close it is to its desired target. If the spacecraft were going to overshoot the landing target, the parachute would be deployed earlier. If it were going to fall short of the target, the parachute would be deployed later, after the spacecraft flew a little closer to its target. The range-triggered strategy could deliver the Perseverance rover a few miles closer to the exact spot in the landing area that scientists are more interested in studying. This is important because it could shave off as much as a year from the rover's driving commute to its intended work site. Another potential advantage of testing the range trigger on this mission is that it could reduce the risk of any future Mars sample return mission. The added benefit would be to help the mission land closer to samples cached on the surface. The heat shield eventually separates and drops further away approximately 20 seconds after parachute deployment, 
At this point, the rover is exposed to the Martian atmosphere for the first time ever. Moments later, essential cameras and instruments can begin the process of locking onto the atmosphere below as it fast approaches. In order to figure out its altitude, the landing radar bounces signals off the Martian surface. Meanwhile, another new EDL technology kicks in. It's called Terrain Relative Navigation. In essence, the system uses a special camera to quickly identify features on the surface. The rover then compares these new images to an onboard map to determine exactly where it's heading. The onboard map was created in advance by the mission team by using images from Mars orbiters. Moreover, the terrain relative navigation lets the rover make considerably more accurate estimates of its position relative to the ground during descent. In prior missions, the spacecraft carrying the rover estimated its location relative to the ground before entering the Martian atmosphere, as well as during entry. This was based on an initial guess from radiometric data provided through the Deep Space Network. This technique had an estimation error of about 0.6 to 1.2 miles or about 1 to 2 kilometers, which grows to about 2 to 3 kilometers during entry. Because the Martian atmosphere is so thin, the parachute is only able to slow the vehicle to about 200 miles per hour or about 320 kilometers per hour. To safely reach its touchdown speed, Perseverance must cut itself free of the parachute and coast the remainder of the way down using its rockets. Directly above the rover is what's known as the rocket powered descent stage. It's easier to think of it as a jetpack with eight engines pointed towards the ground. The rover fires up the descent stage engines. At this point, the descent stage quickly shifts to avoid being impacted by the falling parachute and back shell. The direction of this maneuver to avoid collisions is determined by the safe target selected by the computer that operates the terrain relative navigation. While the descent stage begins to level out and slow to its final speed of about 1.7 miles per hour, or 2.7 kilometers per hour, the sky crane maneuver is initiated with about 12 seconds before touchdown. This occurs approximately about 66 feet or 20 meters above the surface. At this moment, the descent stage lowers the rover on a set of cables about 21 feet or 6.4 meters long. And as soon as the rover senses that its wheels have officially made contact with the Martian surface, it quickly cuts the cables connecting it to the descent stage. This frees the descent stage to fly off a safe distance away from Perseverance to make its own uncontrolled landing on the surface. Now the rover can begin its scientific journey by surveying the terrain and collecting samples for an ambitious return to Earth 